This is Watkins. Welcome with Bridget Fetisy. I'm Bridget Fetisy, and you are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> You know the drill. Please subscribe, rate, comment, share, reach out, tell your friends, send smoke signals, whatever. We love your feedback and we want to hear from you. We'd like to thank our sponsors this week, Quip, Manscaped, and Ritual. Quip is an electric toothbrush, refillable floss, and toothpaste service. Go to getquip.com slash Bridget to save on gift sets and get your first refill free with a refill plan. Support for Walk-In's Welcome comes from Manscaped, who is number one in men's below-the-belt grooming. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code WALKIN at manscaped.com. Ritual is the obsessively researched vitamin for women. Better health doesn't happen overnight, and right now, Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash walk-in to start your ritual today. This week on the podcast, we welcome Coach T. Coach T is a DJ, sound engineer, producer, and podcast personality best known for his work on all three seasons of Jeff Ross Presents Roast Battle on Comedy Central. Coach T has been one of the most sought-after DJs in the comedy world, spinning weekly at the world-famous comedy store in Hollywood, California. Coach has and will continue his journey of using his gifts and talents to enhance those around him, progress art, and work from a place of love all while putting smiles on faces and laughs in the belly. I hope you guys have fun. Coach T, what do you what do you go by? I only know you as Coach T. That's We're it. We're recording now. That's it, Coach that's, T. That's who T- you are. Yeah, TEA, like the stuff you drink. I was actually a coach. Oh, okay. Yeah, I actually coached wrestling. Ah. I was a, uh, I don't want to say, I was a really passionate wrestling coach and wrestler up until about five years ago when I started all of this Hollywood shit. <laughs> <laughs> what, so... When you started this Hollywood shit, tell us, you know, we have a mutual friend, um, Brian Moses, who's yep. appeared on this podcast oh, good to talk Moses. about the uh-huh. roast battle. It was a bananas episode. That's good. Yeah, it was fun. It was wild. That's um, good. And he was talking about roast battle and we talked a lot about free speech because, you know, that intersection of comedy yeah. and roast battle. And you do the djing for roast battle correct uh, yeah i i would say i do the sound design the sound design yeah it's a yeah, yeah it is it is genius oh i appreciate that. i it is genius 90 uh, percent really? of my favorite thing about roast battle even after being as many as i've been to is really seeing what you're gonna throw down because i at a certain point you've heard every like fat joke there you go. And yeah. you've heard every kind of racist joke yeah, that yeah, you yeah. can throw or whatever. There's only, I feel like that you can only, yeah, after a while. But what you do is uh-huh. throw in the different songs. You're so quick. How are you so quick? Uh, a lot of preparation, honestly. Just making sure that uh, anything that might be funny is in a place that I can get to it fast enough. But how do you get those songs so quickly that so perfectly illustrate whatever jokes they're spinning back and forth? <laughs> I'm not even present. Like, I'm just scanning almost. Uh-huh. It's almost like my brain's like a scan, and it's like, it's almost like Shazam. Like, oh, I heard something, and before... It's we, crazy. Yeah, we try to get it out, try to have the right timing. And, oh, it's genius. Uh, I want yeah. somebody to... If you ever pay attention to Roast Battle, where can people watch Roast Battle? Uh, it streams on Periscope. Um, oh right yeah it streams on periscope uh there's a tv version and that's cool but uh, i like the live version everyone likes the live version. i think it's a live event i agree i agree it's a little it's more dangerous in the belly room tv is presented a little too safe it's like wayne's world yeah when wayne's world got produced yeah yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Uh, that's very well put <laughs> it's uh, yeah. suddenly you're like it, you're cutting and you're yeah. trying to get another take and yeah. yeah, there's something. I mean, there was a, a night there that they were burning chairs, and I'm like, you know, they were burning something on stage, and uh-huh. it's like a very con- the belly room for anyone who's listening at the comedy store. First of all, there that place would go up in like a second. There's so much layers yeah. of like oil, and I don't yeah. even know. And it's a very crowded, probably not safe you know yeah. fire fire it feels wise dangerous. it does it, it feels like oh it feels like i'm doing something that i'm not supposed to be doing it does and there's jokes that i, I test technically we're not even supposed to say anymore so well that's why i love you know i forget who it was i think it was um 
who is it? John Mayer who calls uh-huh. it the church who called it the church of free speech yeah. or something yeah. and it does feel that way and when and when you're actually in the belly room and in in the live event uh-huh. it feels um like a relief. Oh, I just feel like I'm so glad you said that. Ah. Like thank God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like we're finally making sense again. Have you seen Andrew Schultz's uh, Andrew Schultz's new um half hour special that he put out on youtube i haven't seen it but it's crowd work okay it's dangerous really the shit that he's saying it's completely it's all completely out of his like brain okay and it's just freestyle but it's like he goes it's racist and inappropriate and no censoring okay it's kind of it's another one of those things where you watch it but you can see the the thing that was even more interesting to me than what just how brilliant he is mm-hmm. is how the crowd seemed so palpably relieved and they were just uh, loud and clapping and it was like this sense yeah. of um freedom yeah they're being told what they can't do all the time yeah, yeah and yeah. i don't think people realize how present ever present that is now yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty heavy right now. Yeah, the heaviness of like uh we had Brett Stevens in earlier and he was uh-huh. talking about how he became very fascinated with totalitarian um literature like Orwell and these yeah. author- authors who explore that and yeah. when citizens are spying on citizens and uh-huh. and ratting each other out. And we have a bit a lot of that with the advent of technology and kind of this mob mentality. So I think that People aren't aware of how present the mob is. Yeah, always in their subconscious. Because they don't think it's a mob. No. And because people are allowing information to be told to them instead of actually trying to learn and understand things as they see them, they don't even understand it's a mob. They think they're being sensitive. They think they're being very respectful. Mm. And I'm like, well, that's how mobs happen because all you're doing is paying attention to inputs instead of trying to figure out what the hell is going on yeah what's happening is we've got just a group of people who are being spun up pointed in a direction and then let go and it's so interesting though because as i was trying to figure out earlier as opposed to say with like maga where there's kind of a figurehead who can rile there's some one yeah this on the left, this stuff yeah. feels very decentralized. It's like an they, idea. Yeah, they always eat each other, and I think that's that's the purpose of it. That's that's by the way, that's the most dangerous thing of all. Like I don't know if you, I had the, I didn't read a book until I went to college, uh-huh. and then the I first didn't go bo- to college. <laughs> the, the first book I ever read was Fight Club. Right? Uh, we all watch the movie and yeah. it's whatever but when you actually break down fight club what it is is like they're trying to build anarchy and how you build anarchy is just creating this thing that's kind of like like there's there is no head mm. and to me i'm like oh that's how it works so everybody thinks of order as something linear right like there's yeah. chaos and then order but like but actually in fight club it was presented as a circle so the more order you have the closer you are to chaos and so it's it's almost like a clock, right? You know, the one, it's clock, and you know, and yep. eleven. And so they created this thing where where nothing was in control and no one can bring it down. And to me, that's way more dangerous than a movement that has a figurehead because when you topple that, then it goes down. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. It's interesting you say that because just uh-huh. the other day, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Michael Malice. No, I'm an idiot. Uh, you gotta educate me. I'm no, to Michael. Educated. Michael's on. He's on Twitter, and he, I could never really figure out what his politics were because uh-huh. he's very slippery. Okay, he's been on the podcast too. Now he's uh, he's hilarious, but okay. I never really got it. And and then when he came through, he explained that he was an anarchist. Oh, and I and just the other day because things are just getting so crazy, I said I'm more and more getting in alignment with Michael Malice's oh, anarchy okay. vibe. And he said, it, what did he say? It was something like, "For you you went there gradually and it happened suddenly. Oh. And it was so insightful too, because I'm like, wow, that is, that is kind of descriptive. Like I've gradually been like, God, you get that circle eats its own head and eventually yeah. you're like, LOL, nothing matters. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, yeah. yeah. and then you're in anarchy. <laughs> yeah, you got to pay attention to the way you structured your life. And I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to anyone no. who's listening. We have to be very careful on how we structure our life. And I don't think a lot of people are structuring their lives anymore. 
What do you mean by structuring their life? Uh, identifying what's valuable and what's not and what mm. you should be serving. Whatever that means. You want to, whatever. I'm extremely, I don't want to say religious. Yeah. I'll just say I follow, I, I study scripture all day long. And so, and, and I use scripture to, to protect myself from myself. And so, but that's just one way that I do it. And so I spend all day long with people who have created these value systems or have allowed value systems to be created for them. And then they just find themselves serving these value systems, completely fucking miserable, hating right. where they're at and not understanding how they got there. Interesting. So I'm like, well, why aren't we just deconstructing what our value systems are? So, and when you say you spend all day with people who have these value systems, can you explain what yeah. you do? Yeah, well, as much as I possibly can, I work in a, in a boy's placement, which is basically uh, a young man under the age of 18, he commits a crime, and if the judge or someone in his life feels like there's an opportunity for him to not reoffend, they put him in like a treatment-based facility. So Interesting. It's, there's no cages, it's a house. It's, there's it's like a halfway house? Yeah, but it's without a, like recovery. Yeah, but there's re, there's all kinds of programs. Okay, so there's a recovery okay. program if it's a part of the issue. But the, but the, but what we're trying to do is we're just trying to heal the client and we're just trying to teach them how to self regulate, teach them mm. how to get out of their way, and that's just what it is. And if they decide to leave, they decide to leave. It is what it is. It's not about, it. it's not about serving time. It's about uh, get just learning how to get out of your own way. And I feel like that's life's purpose. Exactly. I mean, you'll see in my in because this is this is my my recording studios in my house in my bedroom. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There's a um, and this comes from I'm in recovery. The okay. first thing I see every day when I wake up is it, it's from the third step prayer in AA. Okay. And it says, "Relieve me of the bondage of self." And that mm. is that is isn't that the thing? You know, diminishing yeah. myself as much as I possibly can. But it's so counterintuitive to everything that I feel I do a lot of the time, which feels incredibly self-absorbed and narcissistic. Yeah, I was, I was, I was just having. I don't know if I was having this conversation with my wife, but it was um, actually I was having this conversation with a guy who I consider to be a mentor, mm -hmm. and we're just going to bounce it back to scripture because that's all I know how to do. And so basically, what the instruction is like: Hey, look, we're going to give you gifts. I'm talking about the higher power, God, Yeshua, whatever you want to call him. He's like, we're going to give people gifts. And these gifts are to serve other people because that action is the only way that you can realize that you can't be in control because when you try to be in control, shit hits the fan. Right. Like as long as you are in line and taking care of your business, you're provided for. But we always get caught up in trying to provide for ourselves. And then that's literally where all the chaos comes from. Wow. So it's hard to tell someone, I'm not going to provide for myself. Well, then who's going to fill in that gap? So now, so I don't know, I don't have an answer for that. So I don't really know how people do it. Uh, so what do you teach the boys in terms of structuring their life? Uh, we just, we... we does, we, is it rooted in scripture? Do hell no. This oh. is, you're talking to Coach T. Well, and it depends on where the person's at. Okay. One time, this kid, all he asked about was that because he was concerned about his soul. Right, right. I wasn't sure if this was an organization that may have been like religious. It based. was. It was okay. Catholic, but it's been ran over by liberals. Oh, okay. So it's 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 long. It's gone. like secular now. It's yeah. It's it's what it is. Okay. It's like everything else. But this is just me, and so we try to get people to. I and not even just the boys. So I do this everywhere I'm at, even, including in Hollywood. Okay. Which is why I'm close to some people, and some people are like, I'm not fucking with that because right. I'm just a hedonist. I'm like, hey, whatever. So we just try to. To get people to understand understand where they're at and what role they play to get to where they're at mm -hmm. and that's just what it is and then through that process you'd be surprised what solutions pop out personal responsibility is a pretty unpopular message in 2019 it doesn't exist <laughs> it doesn't exist <laughs> and that's one of the things that every time i, I talk about it people get at, mad at me <laughs> and, and but, rage yeah so i had a conversation with moses we we're talking about moses uh, about and i think the statement that i said in that was Happiness doesn't exist without accountability. Right. It, it just, it, it just, I've never seen it. Like, I, I almost would say, even if it's not your fault, if your default is what role did I play in it, there's just more peace in that. Right. Because you feel powerful. You don't feel powerless. Right. And when people feel powerless, then they start acting out of rage and it just gets ugly. I think that my therapist is very amazing. And she, one of the biggest things about recovery is uh -huh. that, you know, I was in recovery for heroin addiction at 19. Wow. Young. That's that big shit. Yeah. 
But I wasn't shooting it, so by junkie standards, I'm kind of a puss. Listen, man, you did that H. <laughs> you did that H. <laughs> so you were in the league, as junkie we would say. Junkie pride is such a funny thing. Hey, it's man. like I still have it to this day, and I have to. I, <laughs> you know, you're, I'm like, oh, that's nice. But then the junkies who are even more junky, I work with girls who shot, and they're like, oh, you didn't really shoot it. Only never mind. Listen, man, that H is H, man. Yeah. So I, I never, I, I recovered from that and never touched it again and then i got sober sober at 35 okay and but ever since my first stint in rehab in a halfway house and yeah. it was interesting because i'm a white girl mm -hmm. who grew up um like middle class uh -huh. not rich but we were always like the wrong side of the tracks of this uber wealthy okay and so I didn't, I wasn't poor, but I always felt poor yeah, <laughs> because yeah, yeah. we were around like the 0.01%. Okay. It was weird. So we were very like blue collar working, working to like upper working class and okay. moved a lot and was in many different kinds of environments. So I was in cities and I was in suburbs and whatever. And then I went to rehab and they cut my insurance off and then I put myself into state funded rehab in Minnesota, which has great, like it's like the joke is that it's land of 10,000 treatment centers huh. and put myself on general assistance. And I went into um, a state funded halfway house and I was the only white girl. Oh. And it was all women who were basically like, it was their last chance before jail. So oh, they, okay. the judge would say, Hey, if you can do 90 days at um, wherever the place what the place that I was at they these yeah. women did save my life it was all run by all lesbians like it was it was Ooh. a crazy it was so such a crazy awesome I I remember being 19 and I was like a straight A student until I was 17 and there was a lot of family stuff that derailed yeah things I didn't have control over yeah and a lot of bad choices that I made and uh -huh. ended up sitting there and it was when i saw orange is the new black i was uh -huh. like that was outside of being in jail but that was my i was like the fish out of water completely. okay and i always felt like and this is where intersectionality is so interesting to me i always felt like i didn't belong and i didn't have a right to share because hearing everybody else's stories i was like oh i've i'm just a spoiled white girl who's had too much okay and i wouldn't share and the counselors were like you're using that as a defense mechanism and it doesn't matter and you need to share and i <laughs> i finally like opened up about my story and all the all the women were like damn that shit's fucked up huh. <laughs> wait they're like white people are fucked up what's up with your stepdad uh, they're, yeah they're they're bad. And I realized <laughs> it didn't matter. You know, like the struggle is the struggle. It's just life. Yeah. And I was sitting there judging myself. They weren't uh -huh. judging me. I mean, they might have been judging me, but I was doing more judging of myself then. Uh -huh. And it was preventing me from really taking full responsibility of my own shit. Uh -huh. And in that rehab, they really taught us like I never will. I'd be like, they're pushing my buttons. They're pushing my buttons. Here I am 19. And they're like, yeah. And they're your buttons and you need to take responsibility for them. Mm. And my therapist always says, don't ask, stop asking what's happening to you and what's happening for you. Mm. And this is the whole, for me, idea of like God, you know, God, it's will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't, I talk about this stuff yeah. and in LA and people, I, I hesitate to even use the word God. I was, I was thinking that and, um. I say it all the time because I have to, because I'm, right now I'm like, I'm trying to remove all of my pride, mm -hmm. right? My pride is a humongous problem. It's mm -hmm. actually the only thing I ever pray about. Please remove my pride. Please help me remove my wife's pride so that we can walk with you. Um, one of the issues- Do you have kids? No, no kids. Okay. Uh, one of the issues is is religion has been hijacked. And uh. I just and that's just what it is. And so Moses is always looking at me and he's all like, oh, you see, he doesn't like the who's representing religion. When I'm like, and my wife does this too, because you're familiar with the Jim Jones things, right? Yeah. So we watched a Jim Jones documentary and she was like, see, that's why I think it's, that's why I don't like it and I don't trust it. And I said, well, that's because you don't understand it. Like if you actually understood the scripture, you could spot this fake so easily. Right. And so it's like people don't, people don't understand what's going on and they don't understand how religion has been hijacked. So I would always say like religion is, is man's attempt to control God and, and science is, is man's attempt to control the world. Right. And so I'm just like, you just got to look at it like that. So if we're talking about, you know, before there was an organized church, 
that's where you get your best information. Right. Post organized church, it gets hard because how do you how do you stand up for this when you hear about the wicked shit that goes on in these in these buildings? Right. So that's that's why I feel it's hard, and I agree with you. So what do you? How do you kind of reconcile that? You just oh, I study my ass off. Okay. Like, and when I mean I study my, I started with. Uh, because I'm married, right? Were you always re- religious? I grew up Baptist. Okay. I grew up uh, Baptist, but when I went to college, I kind of just was whatever. And where are you from again? Ridgecrest, California. Okay. And I grew up like it's a Southern Baptist, hooting, hollering, having all kinds of fun. Okay. But I was always very inquisitive uh, about, you know, whatever. Like, like what's going on? Like, shit ain't making really sense. And, and just so that we're clear, if anyone who doesn't understand religion... Everything Catholics and Baptists and, and, and Protestants, that's that's all that's all whatever Christianity. Right? right. And what we've done is we've said Christianity is different than Judaism, which is true. Right. Right. But I'm like, if you really study it, it's the same. It's the same process. And right. nobody understands that. So I grew up in this system where I was always pushed away uh, from understanding the root. All right. So Christianity is what happened after. But the root is Judaism, right. is, is Mosaic law. So I guess in the, like the last three years, I just started studying Mosaic law. Now, it's damn near impossible to understand it without understanding what was going on at that time, without trying to learn a, a couple Hebrew words. But if you if you care about this scripture, then you kind of want to know what's going on and how the hell did we get here? Right. And now that I feel that I understand it, I'm like, I just have so much peace because I'm aware of not getting caught up in shit that destroys people. Uh, and if no one's religious, that's just what I do is figure out how to not get caught up in the shit that destroys people. And how do you do that? You have to understand what the fuck is going on. Yeah. And you have to realize what the motivations are. Is it hard to be in LA? I don't think so. I, I mean, is it how do you how do you deal with um because I see what I see on the left is um they they might not see it this way, but it's a religion. The kind uh-huh. of wokeism. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's there's something that I have that you don't have. It is the fact that I'm a very urban black person. Right. So I get to say what I want. And as a right, matter of fact, when right, I say right. it, people get all scared. Right. And when they, and when if you said the same thing that I said, they would be like, Ah, you can't say that. Right. You're white. So when I say that shit, they're like, Oh, we got to be sensitive to him because now we don't want to be offensive to him. So I'm actually given, uh more free speech and more freedom and more rope to say what i want to say which probably pisses more people off because they're like you should you should be on our side because i'm fighting for you right and i always tell my wife like you never do something for a person unless they ask you so right so if you did it first you did it for yourself and just no one's ever taught you that right so we have the entire twitter saying i'm doing this for black people i'm doing this for gays well i'm like that's (laughs) that's not how that's not how shit works (laughs) you're doing that for you unless somebody came up to you and say hey look out for me yeah yeah then you're then you're working from a place of service that was what was interesting i had a great conversation with an uber driver in dallas this black woman and she was raging against wokeism hey and then she was raging against candace owens too so she was kind of like going she was just like you know what black women need they need money give us money and i was laughing (laughs) because because i asked her i said you know how can i help like how how can i i've 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 never felt like the need to it feels infantilizing to me if Mm -hmm. because if I don't want like handouts, I want, uh-huh. I would like mentor. I would prefer mentors yeah. and prefer advice and wisdom than a handout. And if somebody was like, hey, we're going to give you this. I saw something yesterday. It was like a Monopoly game, uh-huh. but it's women centered. And so the women get $240 when they go around <laughs> instead of, and the uh, men get 200 Oh, that's hilarious. I'm like, no, I want to compete with the men on e- That's equality is like yeah. competing equally, not getting like a $40 handout. Yeah. So, so, okay. So to touch on your, how do we know what's going on? Uh, I used to teach a uh, special ed. I used to have to like write IEPs, like 17. Yep, if yep. anyone's ever done that, IEPs are trash. Um, they are. And I did it. I worked e- with autistic kids. Oh, see, there you go. Oh, I know the IEP. Oh, it's brutal. Ugh. So, and I did, um, I worked in an ED class. So ED or emotionally disturbed. These are the kids who, who put their hands on teachers and things of that nature. Right. And I guess one of my gifts is just being able to return a person to baseline and so that just ends up being, oh, put every kid in Mr. Blanche's class. <laughs> and so everyone would bitch in special ed. And I don't understand that. Like it actually puts me at odds with people. Because when I hear someone identify something that's a problem, all I do is identify a solution. But my last year there, what actually made me get out of special ed was like, I was like, oh my God, I 
the reason why no one likes me because I just keep giving solutions. Uh, I'm actually pissing them off because they don't want a solution. They simply want to be, they just want a bitch. Uh, so I was like, oh, we're doing the wrong, we're doing different things. Right. And so I was like, oh, so now I know. So now I'm aware. If I catch somebody who's not looking for a solution, then you just want a bitch. That's a completely different interaction. What do you do in that circumstance? Because I feel like that is even more challenging. It's a lot, a lot of the times people that are closest to people who yeah. will use you as a bit of a like yeah. dumpster to kind of, it's really, there's yeah. no. This is what's going on. And it's it, just wanting to complain. Yeah. yeah, well, when someone bitches, a, a lot of times they're, they're just removing the role that they played in right. whatever situation they're in. So we just try to figure out how did you get there? And then, and when, if there's something, if something is a problem that they consider to be a problem, I don't like the way my boss looks at me. I don't like the way, whatever the hell, well, then we need to address why it is that you don't like it. Right. And if it's something that's really wrong, then we create solutions. Right. But what ends up happening is, I guess when someone bitches, that's when they put something on a pedestal and now there's an impedance between the pedestal. And they don't know how to just release their attachment to the pedestal. Right. So we had like a whole big thing over Louis C.K., right? And we had Stephanie Zambari and Moses. We had a really good podcast about Louis C.K. And and I was just like, I don't understand what's going on. Women are so upset with Hollywood, but why aren't they just leaving Hollywood? Like you don't understand. Mm-hmm. Like you are doing everything you can to be in something that's terrible. The issue is your infatuation with Hollywood. Right. I don't, men are going to be men and I don't want to excuse them at all. But I'm like, you want to be here and you're mad that somebody is taking advantage of that. So why don't we just address what, why you think Hollywood makes you more valuable? Because that's a better conversation. Why you think Hollywood? Absolutely. But don't you think that women should have the same entry to it, to it without having to overcome like that, that kind of puts men on a pedestal from my perspective. You're saying should women be able to come into Hollywood? How about this? How it should be is whatever. I can't control how it should be. But I do know how people get taken advantage of. Oh, yeah, and totally. It, and, so, and so it's like what ends up happening is we get pushed into these categories. So every time I hear about uh, Harvey Weinstein, every time I hear about anything like that, I immediately go into like how do I protect the person who's closest to me? Right. But that's not what people want to have the conversation on. People want to have the conversation about what do I do about Harvey? And I'm like, well, Harvey Harvey exists. He will always, there will always be a Harvey. I rather, and not in a dismissive way, I just find it to be a more uh, empowering conversation if I give you skills that Harvey never affects you. And then you teach it to everyone around you. And it's interesting because one of the reasons Harvey's exist is because they're rewarded. So it's a system we, I was at a party after a lot of the Me Too stuff. And one of the guys who was a producer who he got Me Too-ish, but was still working. And there were, everybody knew who this guy was and what he had been accused of. And there were still women models going up to him and flirting with him and showing them their headshots from their phones. Yeah. And I was like, you guys know exactly. This is why these fucking guys exist. Yeah. And so, and, and you have to take not, not, I'm not victim blaming the women yeah, at yeah, all, yeah. but there, the, there are certain to act like that. There aren't women who are taking advantage of these situations yeah. to try and forward themselves I found it infantilizing again. It's like, okay, well, there were a lot of women who took advantage of, they had power too. Yeah, they took advantage of the sexual tension. And their own beauty and power. Yeah. And 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 to act like that's not something that women do is crazy to me. We're going to go even one step further. I think women should be allowed to do it. Of course. If you want to sleep your way to wherever you want to be, of you, course. you ought to have the option. Yeah. And so I'm like, so how then if, with that, with that said, if a guy says, I only want to hire people that do whatever. And I'm like, and a woman says, I only want to work with places that I don't have to work hard and everybody works with me. <laughs> Aren't I being accepting if I allow for that to exist? So then my conversation is to the woman that's like, no, I'm really care about acting and I don't want to be taken advantage of. So let's have that conversation. Right. So if the girl that says, hey, use me, just make me popular. And a guy's like, I'll make okay. you popular. Let me use you. Shouldn't they be able to live off in their fucked off fantasy land? They, I mean, they do. I guess <laughs> they do. I, they, I, they still are. I'd like to take a quick break so we can talk about our sponsor. I just got my teeth cleaned recently and I owe my bright pearly whites to Quip. Quip is something that's sure to put a smile on everyone's mouth. 
because it's dental care they'll actually want to use every day. That's why Quip is the perfect, thoughtful, and practical gift. The holiday shopping season is here, and this year your gift can start next year's good habit with Quip. With an electric toothbrush, refillable floss, and toothpaste, all intentionally designed to make good habits simple. The Quip electric toothbrush has sensitive sonic vibrations and a timer with 30-second pulses to guide your routine, and the Quip floss dispenser has pre-marked strings so you always use the right amount. Plus, Quip delivers brush heads, floss, and toothpaste refills every three months. Quip uses sensitive sonic vibrations for an effective clean that's gentle on your sensitive gums. People brush too hard, and some electric toothbrushes are too abrasive. It also has a built-in two-minute timer, which pulses every 30 seconds to remind you when to switch sides and help you clean your whole mouth evenly. Join over 3 million happy customers and check everyone off your gift list right now with Quip. Just go to getquip.com slash Bridget to save on gift sets and to get your first refill free with the refill plan. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash Bridget, B-R-I-D-G-E-T, getquip.com slash Bridget. Quip is an electric toothbrush refillable floss and toothpaste service. Go to getquip.com slash Bridget to save on gift sets and get your first refill free with a refill plan. One of the things that that I get caught up in Hollywood all the time is I, I always try to say is like, I just don't feel anyone has the right to ever tell anybody anything. Mm. Ever. Like ever. You should never do that because you probably will catch yourself working from a place of selfishness and a place of pride, even if it sounds good, right? Even if it's like, you shouldn't murder babies. I'm like, <laughs> all right, yeah, but still, I don't know if I should be the one to tell you that. Yeah. So when I'm working in therapy, we're gonna ha- we're gonna try to process you to the point where you feel like you shouldn't murder babies. Right. Because if I tell you not to murder babies and you don't give a fuck about me, you're probably gonna murder babies. <laughs> and I don't mean abortion, I mean like literally like babies in cribs. Right, right. And so I'm like, People think that I could, you could just go someplace and say, "Hey, you're doing something wrong. You're stepping on whatever. You're kicking, you're kicking dogs. That's bad." It doesn't matter that I say that. If right. he thinks it's okay, we need to talk about that. That's interesting. And get him to a place where he might. Well, maybe I shouldn't kick a dog. Right. It's yeah. like switching the internal um, motivations and yeah. the moral psychology that they have. Yeah, but we live in woke culture where everybody's telling us what we should and should not do. And I'm like, that's that's crazy. You think you could tell me what to do? Like, I would. I want you to come to my house and tell me that. That's interesting. That yeah. you think that you can tell me where I should shop. And what I should watch and how I should laugh. That's You're wearing a-, a red hat. That's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. That's basically, I read somewhere the other day, it was like the red hat is the new white hood, which has like. Oh, the, uh, oh, the, uh, the MAGA hats now. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're not yeah. wearing a MAGA hat, yeah, but yeah. you're wearing a red hat. Yeah. And this woman said any red hat makes her nervous. Oh, that's said, what she said? She said, can we get rid of red hats? And I was like, bitch, you're come, crazy. Right, come get my hat then. Yeah. How about that? Come get my hat. So I guess when. I guess when people are putting their woke laws on somebody, if they if they work from a place of this is a law that's greater than myself and can be applied in all of these places, well, then that would make more sense. But I I, I feel like most of the woke laws are like circumstantial. Yeah, this is this is what I want. And this is how I want it to be. Yeah. But it's like, oh, like 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 reverse racism. Right. Yeah. Like, I don't understand if we're mad at racism, we should be mad at racism. No, but they changed the meaning of that word. Racism is different now. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's um, privilege plus power. I don't. So you I can't be racist. You can't be. I'm racist? sorry. You can't. Be I racist. can't be racist. I can't be racist. Yeah, you can't be racist because we live. It's all about intersectionality and critical theory in particular is all uh-huh. about structures of power. Okay. So you're constantly evaluating everything from a system of where power and privilege. Yeah. And basically why you hear things like the oppression Olympics or the oppression Olympics. W- that's kind of what they call woke culture where, but <laughs> on, on the right, they'll <laughs> call hilarious. it the oppression. Olympics, that's hilarious. Where it's like, okay, I'm lower than you on the totem pole. The white man is the lowest yeah. than me. The white woman who's a benefit of the patriarchy. Yeah. Then um, probably you because you're a man, but yeah. you're black. And yeah. then black women. But then you have um, LGBTQ. Oh. But even like 
it gets complicated because somebody like Dave Rubin, who's a white gay man, is lower because he is because he doesn't preach woke. He oh. he doesn't speak their the oh. wokeism, and then like at the top would probably be a a a black disabled transgender woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm like, I'm like i'm like who's making these rules but man? basically you yeah. just said it you explained it you said i can say these things because i'm black and you're yeah. so that is the that yeah. is the example of the oppression olympics i think it has more to do with the fact that i'm not just black i'm actually a nigga and i'm actually a nigga in recovery and i'm a hip-hop nigga and that changes things differently um what like, does that mean like moses is black all right like now that, you are, you're gonna have to explain this. yeah thing. yeah yeah and i don't and it, like so we're the same like i'm a nigga and nigga is non-culture like it's not even a color a nigga is somebody who's like i just the idea of caring what you say is is crazy to me like like come get it like that's crazy to me every time i have conversations with moses he's uh i don't say every time and i'm picking on moses but he's representing a lot of people in hollywood okay they're like these people might do something to me that i would never say that I would be like, come, come do that shit. Right. Like, what are you talking about? Like, that doesn't make what it, people. What like um, one of the one of the concerns that Moses has is how women are treated in a roast battle. Right. And I say that's preposterous. You are the fairest person when it comes to sex ever. Yeah, yeah. It's not even a conversation. Any woman that wants to be on a roast battle. It, there is no barrier to entry and women no. do good and women do well in roast battle because they're nasty exactly Na but some of the nastiest exactly. roast battles i've seen women have eviscerated men so if somebody from the outside said the roast battle is sexist as a nigga i said get the fuck out of here <laughs> so what the hell are we talking prove that i need receipts but moses would be like i don't even want that said i'd be like i don't care if it's said it's not yeah. true it doesn't make any sense to me it's not true because no one can prove it but but he, he but he works from that place and i don't even pick on it but a lot of people work from that place. no totally like a lot of people are working from the place of like don't say any don't dirty me yeah. but niggas is like i am already dirty yeah you cannot do anything to me there's nothing you can do to me and i actually uh i'm, I'm focused on serving kids but if i get to fight i love a fight and let's fight and let's get dirty because that is what it is and so a lot so there's a, a lot of people who are like please don't say anything bad. And if you do say anything bad, then they're like, oh, you have power over me. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, oh, you said something bad? Oh, now I'm in war? Oh, shit. Now we're at war. It's no problem. And I fight so dirty. And that's what makes people think twice. It isn't necessarily my size and my color. It's the fact that I give off energy that like, I'll, I'll go lower than you. Like, Interesting. It, it's just what like, I'm a wrestler. It's a little bit different. Like, it's like a fight is a sport for me. Like, it isn't like, I don't want to make... I don't want you to be upset. I'm like, I don't, I don't care if you're upset. And Actually, how what, do you reconcile that with like the higher scriptures? Oh, that's exactly how it's supposed to be. Mm. Is you are to be caught up in nothing. You cannot be caught up in people. Right. And when you get caught up in people, they will motivate you to move kind of separately. And the reason why I don't put hands on people and the reason why I don't promote violence is because scripture. Right. This is what it is. And so it's like, if I do not submit to that, then I would be, one of the worst types of human beings ever. Right. Because I'm capable of doing a lot of damage to a lot of things. And I ain't talking physically. Like, I, if I just, if I didn't, and you probably know this, you're in recovery. If you did not work on the maintenance <laughs> of your life, <laughs> what would you become? I'm a menace to society. Exactly. I'm a menace. Exactly. I mean, I talk a lot about this all the time. That This is the theme of this podcast, uh -huh. is essentially how the fuck do you get out of your own way? You have to admit that you're in your own way. But that's a, you know, there's a, a, we have a culture that rewards being a victim. So it's already hard enough to get out of your own way. But uh -huh. now we have a culture that actually monetarily will reward the bigger victims. And this is the dangerous thing that I've talked to my therapist a lot about because she has a lot of these younger generation who are who have been indoctrinated with uh -huh. wokeism. Yeah. And it's so detrimental to the soul. Yeah. It's so um, it offers no path to personal responsibility or wow. growth. Wow. Because you're constantly externally virtue signaling exactly. worrying about what everybody is saying yeah. about you yeah and you're not centered in yourself at all and there's no connection yeah. to something greater 
I'm I'm more concerned about two generations from now than now. Interesting. Because I'm I'm seeing the way the pushback is like it's it's good. It's I can watch the fight. Like I can hear the Green New Deal, and I'm like, man, that sounds crazy. And I can <laughs> and I can watch how people respond to that, and I can watch how people clap back, and and I'm seeing how people are responding to Trump, and I'm like, oh, we're we're okay now. People are talking, but they're being checked. But I'm like. The media has completely taken one side and the media actually is teaching people now. And so two generations from now, we're going to be so far removed that it's going to be probably way more dangerous then. God, you and Brett Stevens said the exact same thing today. He's worried about two generations from now. We don't have a chance. Yeah, he he seems not for different reasons for Uh him. It's more of the corrosion that's happening. You know, there's interesting corrosion happening from the administration, just social norms. But he's more worried about the lack of civility. And as he was explaining it, it, there's a certain amount of psychology required for a free mind. Uh And he was saying that in order to maintain that free mind, you have to be taught those values of yeah. how to disagree. Yeah. And they're not being taught that. Yeah, I don't know where they're being taught. What are they being taught, though? Well, if you go to a church, you're probably being motivated to align secularly and you're not even doing your own research. And then a lot of people walk out of those churches, motivate to hurt uh the people who who are gay and lesbian and 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 they just get indoctrinated and it's just ugly or or even the reverse you get you get too inclusive so there's really nothing being taught and no one's concerned about what's being taught and so i'm like you have to decide what to teach and you it has to come from a personal place like you have to give somebody something that that you know and that you truly understand i don't know who's doing that like i don't even think parents are doing that now because i think a lot of parents are really lost and confused as, as people yeah and, and so i'm just like so we've gotten away from everything and I, and I literally and that's why i say in hollywood when we get to this crutch when people are like well what's the solution what's the solution i'm just like when i look at scripture i literally look at it as as a manual for human beings and now i'll just remove scripture and i'll just say this is the way that men and women should treat each other and then i'll prove it and i'll show you that when you don't treat each other this way this is the outcome and so when i'm, when I'm dealing with a, a, a spiritual concept that i know where i got it from we get we get back to it so i got a i got a guy in hollywood who's caught up with women right and shit is going sideways and i <laughs> And so, and shit is going sideways, but I've told this person a thousand times. I was like, well, just so you know, I believe that every time we have, like the purpose of sex, now you could do anything you want with it, but the purpose of sex is to procreate. Mm-hmm. And so the further you get away from that, good luck to you. Mm-hmm. Because the closer we are to that, you'd be surprised how much peace that people have in their mm-hmm. life. It just is what it is. Mm-hmm. But the further we get away from that, like if we're going to say, let's say I'm uh, Mike Pence, right? Mm-hmm. Mike Pence probably doesn't have a lot of female drama, right? Mm-hmm. He's just with his wife all day. That's all the way to the right. All the way to the left is some porn star. Mm-hmm. Now, we start looking at porn stars and we start evaluating their life on a bulk, not passing judgment, but if you listen to porn star podcasts, you're going to see that, man, these people are probably dealing with some certain things. So I'm just like, I'm not saying that if every time you, you, you don't have sex with the purpose of procreating or, or, or to love your wife. or some, I'm not saying that you're going to be all the way over there, but I'm just saying that's the spectrum. And so if you find yourself with a lot of female issues, then what are you doing about it? It's but, interesting. Yeah. It's interesting because I've been trying to I've been trying to like work out a lot of my feelings about this because I got sober and uh-huh. I I don't regret being a slut. Okay. I'm glad I had, but I wouldn't, I was drinking and whatnot. And yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I had a lot of sexual experience and great, uh-huh. but I feel like on some level I was lied to like by the culture. Oh, by like feminists? I don't like to blame feminism, but it is that idea that like you. You should be in competition with the way that the man is wired. Y- yeah. And also just that sex is empowering which i do believe it can be enormously empowering yeah. if it co- if you're already empowered if you uh, are coming from an empty right. place That's... which i was uh-huh. for many many years even into sobriety as i yeah. healed a lot of trauma like i was drugged and raped when i was 17 wow. so Wow. That created a, a a break and and then there was other stuff and then uh-huh. other stuff and then like it created, you know, then I was in rehab and 
got out and moved out here. And it was uh, many, many years of being lost, I would say, uh-huh. trying to find myself, seeing glimmers and having moments, but uh-huh. never really able to have the rubber meet the road. Uh-huh. And I never really even thought about like birth control, for instance, and okay. how it's a technology. Uh-huh. And how it unyoked sex from its actual purpose. Yeah. And the ramifications that that has Crazy. on a population like generations down the road. Yeah. And younger women, I just didn't have anybody. You know, I had I had my mother who was like, don't sleep with men because they won't value you. But I don't like that message either because that ma- means that your value is around. It makes it um, your value is like connected a, to men. Your value is connected to men, but your value it's a transactional idea. So this idea that you withhold something to give to them. Yeah. And I don't like the idea of sex being necessarily transactional. It's like what I would have liked uh-huh. was more of an idea of the meaningfulness of sex. Okay. Of the actual act. Okay. Of it being something that is beautiful that you share with somebody who values you and you respect and respects you yeah so it sounds like you're saying sex is an an extension of a connection that you have with the person right but that's not what's being taught no (laughs) and so and so and and i'm so i'm like yeah i I agree like i'm not even pushing back on that i would tell everybody that sex is what happens after you've you've decided to invest in a person but now people want to be hoes, and 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 I mean not female <laughs> Men and women. Yeah, they just yeah. want to be hoes because they just want to like be hedonistic, and yeah, I'm just like, yeah. oh, that's crazy. Maybe because I have a wrestling background, and I wasn't just allowed to just be like, oh, I feel hungry, so I'm gonna eat. Right. Like, like I just you had to check yourself. I, I call it delayed gratification, <laughs> right. and I'm like, oh, that that's that's the ultimate high to me. Like right. the ultimate high is like, oh, I want to drink but I'm not going to drink right? until I allow myself to drink. And I always have this weird place of spiritual control and I never feel weak to anything. Right. So like I'm doing my taxes right now. Right. And um, we're going through it and there's all these fucking McDonald's and shoes that, that we spent. And so when we went into 2019, I was like, fuck no McDonald's and no shoes. It's not even a problem. I just didn't like that. It was a habit. And so I'm just like, I'm just going to break myself away just as a way to remind myself not to listen to my body. Right. And so now if every time you want to fuck somebody, if you acted on that, just imagine every time that you fucking get home and, and you're not violated and shit goes wrong and you didn't run across uh, Ted Bundy or fucking Harvey, pray and be very, very thankful. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think people understand that. They're like, I should be able to do that. I joke (laughs) that um, I do stand up about how like the serial killers were just slacking in like the 2000s. (laughs) Like, how the hell did I not end up dead? Just like blacked out, running around like a lunatic. It's a miracle. Yeah, you have favor. It's a miracle. It's truly like, and, and the thing that I've found, you know, somebody was pushing back against the program yesterday because okay. I'm in a 12 step program and they're okay. like, that isn't a religion. It's a tool. And I said, yeah, it's a tool for me who came from Catholicism and yeah. then kind of was a recovering Catholic cause it's a, it was a little messed up and yeah. then went through a whole atheist phase because okay. you do when you're a drunk slut <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> trying to find your way. Yeah. And then that didn't really work and I came, it took a lot of humility to get me back into a 12 step program because yeah. I left when I was 19 and I wasn't just like, oh, to each their own. I was like, F that, those people are crazy, that's fear based and blah, uh-huh. blah, blah. But um, now that I'm back in it, I love how it is a set of principles I can design my life around. There you go. A very simple set of principles, service, unity, recovery. It's like, how can I be of service? Every single day I do a 10th step at the end of the day Mm -hmm. and we ask ourselves how we were selfish, self-seeking, resentful, and afraid. Is there anyone we owe an amend to? What are we grateful for? Every night I end my night that way. Every morning I wake up and I hit my knees and thank God for my life. That's To me, that's scripture, that's a principle. And that's how, probably why you're not getting caught up in this woke shit. Ah, oh. because you're not you're not serving the gratification of your peers. 
You're certain because you know where you can go when you get caught up on the gratification of your peers. Right. And so now you're like, well, wokeism doesn't sound attractive to me because to be woke is just a way to connect anyways. Right. Yeah. Like we're connected because we all think black people have it bad. So now let's look out for black people. Right. Whatever. You don't even know black people. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Like You you think you do. (laughs) That's what I say about I say this all the time about the, the, the whites. The yeah. the people who are kind of standing for White all knights, the minorities, yeah. yeah. But I'm like, do you guys actually know any Latin men? Yeah. Or because Latin men, there's a lot of Latin yeah. men who love Trump, for example. So they'll yeah. be like, we're pre, we're speaking for the Latino community. I'm like, there's only 35 percent of the Latino community came out for Trump. Absolutely. So there's there's somebody reached out to me and they asked me some questions about, oh, I want to get into that field. I'm in entertainment and I heard you're good in this field and I want to get into that field. And and I'm like, well, well, now I'm like, well, let's just let's just focus on you because you have a drive and we just need to get to the bottom of the drive. Like before I feel, before I connect you with what it looks like in the flesh, let's just address where we're at in the spirit. What's motivating you to come here? And, and I don't know you very well, but my field is plagued, overran with people who are codependent. And, mm. and that's what attracts people to therapy that's what attracts people to wokeism is you're looking you're looking to be needed you're looking for someone to want you and so you go to somebody who you feel is actually less than you and their need for you and your services actually builds you up and i'm like that's so perverted and that's what it's all fucked up over ah uh, yeah it's a, it's a weird it's such a weird dynamic because i really try to see um i think i I tend to give people the benefit of the doubt. I Uh think most people are coming from a place of righteousness. Okay. So they think, you know, maybe, yeah, it might not be Uh actual, but so they're, they believe they're being good. Like the, the, I think the divide that we're seeing right now is so fascinating because everyone on either side absolutely believes they're on the right side of history. Yep. And then I'll have people push back and say, "Well, someone has to be right," and I'm, I'm like, "But they're just selfish, and they're both right because they're both selfish. <laughs> That's just what it is. Who are you serving? Right? Because who are you serving? And I, and I, I would say, I would challenge anybody right now. Who the hell are you serving? And then I, you know, you're working from a place of service if they've asked you to help satisfy a need. Like, right. how many people are like, "I'm gonna do this because I feel called to it." I'm like, "That's you." That's yeah. just you. Like, yeah. don't don't lie to yourself anymore. It's literally just you. I'd like to take a quick break so we can talk about our sponsor. Support for Walk Ends Welcome comes from Manscaped, who is number one in men's below the belt grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your man's family jewels. It's the holiday season and it's time to subliminally send a message to your significant other that perhaps he needs to trim the tree downstairs. <laughs> See what I did there? That's why this revolutionary company, Manscaped, has redesigned the electric trimmer. Their Lawnmower 2.0 has proprietary skin safe technology, so this trimmer won't nick or snag your man's nuts. Men, listen up. Untrimmed pubes are a thing of the past and also the early 90s. Cleanliness wins the way to my heart and the hearts of women everywhere. And men. The modern man manscapes in a hygienic way. Don't use the same trimmer on your face as you're using on your balls. That's just dirty and also common sense. And let's talk about stinky balls, shall we? We all know how sweaty balls smell. That's why Manscaped also has the Crop Preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. Men, you already put deodorant on your armpits. Why are you not putting deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? And these products smell good. Their manly scent is attractive and will help set the mood. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code WALKIN at manscaped.com. Ladies, this is the perfect gift for you and your man. And trust me, he will thank you. And men, your balls will thank you. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code WALKIN at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code WALKIN. This is an amazing stocking stuffer and an amazing deal. Happy holidays. Our audience, this Uh audience is primarily 
I think mine is probably mostly libertarian and we're on a conservative platform. So it's mostly, okay. you know, the God, uh, I can freely talk about God and religion. Oh, we get to talk about God? And not feel, it's just funny how much I censor myself even when I'm working with people. You know, in LA, we're kind of in the belly of the beast, which I like. So yeah. it appears like the the wokeism is worse probably than it is to me because I'm in- No, it's bad. Is everywhere? No, no, no. It's bad. Yeah. It's not. If you think that wokeism is nine, it's 13. Okay. It's that. It's it's Here. bad. Or everywhere. The fact that it exists okay, is okay, bad. Okay. Because there are no bubbles. I mean, things are getting a little bit segmented and you can go to Netflix and you never have to go left or right and you can just follow the people on your Facebook. But I'm like, nah, it's it's really, really bad because the people who control the message are gone. And they're not coming back, and they don't want to be. Com- they don't want to come back, and they get caught in lies, and they don't even say that they lied. I don't remember one Jesse Lee Peterson or Jesse Smollett apology. No. So if the people who control the message are okay with getting it wrong, and they're so prideful that they don't want to correct it, then it's not about being right. It's about serving whatever the hell is in their hearts. <laughs> Did you see last week he came out and he was mad at the Chicago police for doing their job as well as they did? <laughs> Listen, man. I was like, this fucking guy. Listen, man. I, that's, that's crazy to me. That's crazy. I'm glad I know you now because Bri was the only person that I could text and be like, yo. I'm pretty sure this motherfucker is lying. <laughs> but see, and that's the and that's the thing that we've talked about a lot are like these, let's just call them, uh, what's the term? Uh, uh, Haley and dialectic, whatever. Some weird term for when somebody creates an event to motivate people. Mm. And so I'm like, yeah, you caught Jesse, but how much of this shit is going on that you don't even know? And so one of the things that infuriates my liberal friends if someone says somebody went into a black church and shot everybody up and i go "Mm, let me get some more details what Mm. they killed black people Mm. no they told you they killed black people let's just do some research it might be what it is or it might not be what it is and they're like they just feel like that's insensitive i have no idea where that anger comes from but i'm like this is too easy like it's too easy you want me to feel a type of way and i'm always in conflict like every day i'm being asked to hate white people yeah, and that's I, interesting. And I just can't because white people have done amazing things in my life. Well, how do you feel too about It's really interesting because I I had Kira Davis on. We had an amazing conversation about mm-hmm. race and she was like, "White people need to stop worried worrying about being racist because you can't even have a conversation if you're uh, worried that you're going to say something racist, you will. Yeah. You know, you're uh-huh. you're just going to. So just yeah. like learn learn by messing up instead yeah, yeah, of being yeah. so careful. And there are certain things. One of the things that I always kind of push back on the right is when they're like, well, no, it's all the same. There's no difference. I'm like, no, that's not true either. The race is all the same. Well, it's like to act like um, you as a white man gets pulled over in a car as often as a black man is just denying fact. Yeah, I don't. This is really interesting because um, we had a comic on. We did a roast about a verbal violence podcast. And uh, he was arguing me on white privilege. He was like, yes, there's white privilege and it's just easier for me. And I was like, that's crazy, man. I never woken up and felt like white people are more privileged. Yeah. It's never crossed my mind. So what would you call it then? Is it just st- stereotyping or profile? I mean, I mean there I, is certain amounts of that. That I, I guess you'd have to. OK, let's let's break it down where we feel white people have more privilege i guess what in the criminal justice system well from just a driving perspective let's, let's say criminal let's say something very simple like driving around la it doesn't bother me when i get pulled over okay i let's explore that yeah it just by the way i haven't been pulled over in over a decade okay i've had some pretty uncomfortable runnings with the cops i've been in handcuffs i've had guns pulled on me it's been it's been out of control it's just never bothered me because i don't know if it was personal or not i just felt like he felt something right and he had fear but the thing is i know i'm fearful like i know i'm a big person i purposely mug my face up in public so no one talks to me and says hi how are you doing right. and so i like i i walk a certain way and sometimes people respond to that and sometimes those people are police <laughs> and they're terrified yeah and so it's like i know you're scared how do we get out of this right and that's just is what it is but i'm like I it's just I I guess it's I guess it's selfish to be like you you can't be afraid of me. 
I'm like, nigga, you should be afraid of me. Like, I'm a four-time <laughs> All-American. Yeah. I literally don't know people who can whip my ass. Like, yeah. I'm just being real. Like, yeah. I don't even know that person. <laughs> you ought to be afraid of what I'm capable of doing. Right. So let's have an interaction so that I can let you know what's in my heart. And every time there's a police interaction that starts negative, it always ends positive because I'm not offended by the idea that someone might consider me dangerous right why is he not allowed to consider me dangerous i don't understand why i should remove that from him interesting yeah that's really fascinating have you talked to cops about this (laughs) we talked to one cop about it yeah randy our buddy randy he he does this blue lives matter thing oh Uh, wow cool yeah yeah yeah. we we've got a we've got a project me and moses actually have a project coming out at one point it's going to come we're in production it's oh nice it's crazy it's 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 fucking stupid what is it oh it's it's just conversations designed to get people to humanize polarizing issues oh nice police black people you know abortion whatever amazing yeah it's it's the goal we're working on it um so anyways we talked to this cop and he kind of validated everything that i thought but I never really thought about it because I just don't I don't think about police. They're not in my life. Yeah. I don't think about them. Um, and what he basically said was we are at war <laughs> and we're scared. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't know who everybody's going to be. Yeah. And I'm like, that is true, which is why people should be very careful around cops, because they're not like if you left yoga class and you and you're in a good place. How dare you assume <laughs> I go to yoga? Not I, even you. I'm I t- do go to yoga. <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm talking to a black guy. I literally <laughs> have like, what are they? Like oh, the, the hot rocks? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like the whitest girl ever. I'm rocking like the cupping marks in a sundress. It's yeah. like LA chic. Hey, man, you live your life. Yeah. Where's my pumpkin spice latte? <laughs> it's just a pier. Yeah. But if, 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 you're, if you just left at a yoga class, and a police just left out of um, finding out that one of that that his training officer was murdered on the field, and he runs into you, and you're like, "I'm calm." And he's like, "I don't know what the fuck's going on." The guy who trained me's dead. Yeah. And it's like he's not allowed to feel that and yeah. be anxious about that. Yeah. I don't know what you're doing. Well, then explain it to him. I actually yeah. just left yoga class. I'm actually a te- this, that, and the other. He's going to ask you some follow-up questions. If you answer them, then you're going to actually allow that cop to be at peace. Mm-hmm. So all these people that are going around kind of triggering police officers, turning their cameras on and being like, I don't have to tell you where I'm going. Guess what you're doing? You're creating more anxiety in the fucking cop. Right. Because now you don't know what the hell is going on. I actually purposely try to have a positive police interaction yeah. so that he, when he comes up to me, he's like, I was scared as shit as that nigga. But he sounds cool as hell. Yeah. Maybe I should be more de-escalated when I approach people. Yeah. But no one thinks like that. They're just like, how dare you be afraid of me? Do you help with the boys kind of with this mentality? Because I feel like it's really important. Um, see, the boys are in another. That's another situation. Oh, okay. So now we're going back to white privilege, right? Now, oh, okay. I really don't know where I would rather trade places with a white person. I don't know. I've never wanted to be white. They're just very corny people to me. They're ashy. It just sounds weird. I've I, always wanted to be black. It, is that most ra- people do. Is that racist? <laughs> no, it's not. I did a whole podcast one day with this girl. She came on and it was awkward and she just wasn't talking and I was trying to fill the space. It was on yeah. my old podcast. Yeah. And then I went off on this. I was like, I always wanted to be black. When I was 12, I wanted to. I was so jealous because I couldn't go into the places that they could go and yeah. I was jealous of it and and people always talk about how they can't come in our neighborhoods. I'm like, but I couldn't go into their neighborhoods either. Yeah. And <laughs> my friend was like, please tell us more all about that bridge. <laughs> like, he just leaned back. He's like, please tell us all about how you wanted to be a black person when you were 13. And it was like 20 minutes of me stumbling over my words. <laughs> but but I but I think there's that's an honesty there. And I, and I thank you for saying that and even bringing it up with me. We don't even know each other that well. But that's my message to all black people bro <laughs> they want to be cam newton they want to be uh the rappers they want to be like like jay-z and beyonce is more interesting than any white couple in the whole world so that's why when people say that we're privileged i'm like i, I don't know i don't get it so let's say are the criminal justice laws twisted now before i can even address the criminal justice laws the outcome is pretty uncomfortable it just is what it is there's way too many black people locked up and there's way too many white people not locked up for there to be so many black white people in the world how we get there i don't know and if i get caught up in how we get there then we don't get solution based now i'm just upset that it looks that way but i do know this every young man that's in my place is a self-serving piece of shit criminal Right. And I know that the <laughs> and I know that the liberals want me to be like, oh, it's okay because he had a no dad. Well, I, got, I had no dad either. 
but I still didn't decide to go in other people's homes. So once you decide to go in other and people's... by the way, guess what policies and for, you know, led to the no dads of the, exactly, of the black right? community? Exactly, Liberal right? Liberal policies. Exactly. <laughs> no one wants to talk about that because Democrats <laughs> save us, right? I guess that's what I'm told. But what, what happens is uh, Latino, brown people break the law and then they come to us, me, and say the laws are unfair. I said, I don't know if they're unfair, but I know you broke it. And I don't even want to look left or look right. Why do you feel it's okay? Why do you feel other people's items are yours? Because mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter how the laws are. Uh. Until you break that cycle, you are just a taker. And there is no happiness for takers. Interesting. Yeah. So I don't, I, don't, I don't even care about the criminal justice system. But the people who participate in the criminal justice system... I don't, I, we're not having that conversation. It's like, why do you think it's okay to, to, to rot? Like you murder people. Like it's you're like a, a murderer. It's a weird, but this is the problem with the, w with the mentalities that are being taught is uh -huh. that it's such a, um, it's like an entitlement. Uh -huh. I, I'm entitled to take. That, I'm entitled that, to steal because it's unfair. Because the world is unfair. That's fucking crazy. So what does that say, right? It's teaching you basically that there's no value or yeah. moral about stealing. It just unyokes your, your, your personal, yeah. like, okay, so stealing's okay yeah. because yeah. it's moral relativ relativism. Yeah. So And hurt people hurt people. So two weeks ago, I took a kid to court. Like, I just randomly showed up and they said, hey, take this guy to court. So I take him to court and he wasn't really talking to me. And I let him listen to music, whatever. And when he got there, his dad was there. You could feel that he was now, he was ready to listen. And I say his heart was a little bit softer. When the heart is hard, there's nothing's going to happen. You just know the heart is hard. And, but he was a little bit softer. And so I said, um, you know, what are you even here for? He said, I broke into a house. I said, interesting. How many houses did you break into? I don't know, 12, 14. And I was like, oh, okay, that's crazy. And I'm cocking calm like this. And I was just like, hey, bro, hey, why the fuck you think other people's shit is yours? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, what are you talking about? So then I just started pointing people on the freeway. I said, this man is at work today. He's providing for his family. And you think the shit that he's doing today is for your ass. Why are you okay with that? Uh -huh. And he was just like, I don't, I don't care about other people. And I said, well, that's, that's why you're here. So when people are asking me to feel sorry for that population, you just need to listen to that population. They think other people's shit is theirs. They, right. they have, they're so greedy that they don't care who they hurt. And then the woke people come and rescue them. Wow. And so it's I'm like, problematic. You're not helping that kid. No, you're no. just you're just satisfying your codependency. Wow. It is such a like weirdly symbiotic relationship of dysfunction. It's, it's, we're not we're not we're not serving that population. As a matter of fact, I was actually in a detention center today. Basically, there's a there's a camp, there's a school on campus. Yep. And the kids were these 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 were the kids kicked out of the school on campus. Okay. And so. And just having a conversation with the guy who was on his second time at my facility. And just on his second time, wh what he was saying to another young man, he was saying, oh, he doesn't care. But what ended up happening was this young man, young man A, glorified gang behavior to young man B, who's very impressive. He's only 14 and this other guy's 17. And I said, why the fuck do you think that's okay? And I'm like, you don't understand that you're always role modeling. You don't know what you're influencing on him. And he said, well, this guy doesn't listen and he's just going to get locked up again. But young man A knows two people who that when they were released, they're dead. And so I'm just like, you have this idea that you're going to be able to come back. I'm like, but coming back is that's if God allows. Like, you know what right. I mean? Like there's people, you know, who were just like him who are in the spirit world. And it's just like and we're not acting like that ain't fucking real. Right. And so he told me all the things he did when he got arrested after he got released the first time. And one of the things he did was he stole the car and then he went to an enemy's gang's hood and then he got the girls of the enemy gang. And was hanging around with them, doing all kind of drugs and smoking with them. Then the police knew the car was stolen. So then he did a high speed chase and then convinced the women that were in the back seat to come up to the front seat while his little ass got into the back and they took the rap for it. Oh, my gosh. That's one of the many, many things he told me <laughs> over the course of his two different stints. And then when he got done saying it, I said, did you think you did anything wrong? Like, nah. I said, what about like as a man committing crime and then pinning it on women? You yeah. don't feel some type of way about that? Fuck them, man. They from the enemy's hood. And I said, okay. So then we spent the rest of the day trying to get him to understand 
that the reason why that's wrong, because that mentality is because it's so self-serving that it's actually self-destructive. Wow. And no one understands that. We're so consumed with trying to get as much food and as much drink as we want that we don't understand that we're just killing everything connected to us. Mm -hmm. And this guy has the baby on the way. Oh, <laughs> just so God. we know. And the woke people want me to let him out of prison. I said, Are you crazy? He yeah. was out. I said, I said, how long were you out before? He said, I was out for two days. Then I was already banging on other people. Yeah. And I'm just like, are we going to have a real conversation about this or I'm just going to feel sorry for him? Yeah. I think that's the problem is that the, yeah. the, the, like you were, we were talking before we started recording about yeah. how it's tough because you are really genius at this, at taking like the, the sides or the groups yeah, and yeah. getting, getting down to the principal or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I feel like the two sides, like in, in terms of, le let's just say left and right for the sake of politics, yeah. can't even talk to each other anymore. One side, it's like, I feel like I'm in a divorce <laughs> and my parents can't talk to each other anymore and they just both think the yeah. other side is evil. Yeah, and I, and I think one of the reasons why we're there is because there's like, I will say this, because I know we're doing some woke bashing, but the conservatives or the people who are right wing or whatever the hell, they've done a lot to create this country the way that it is. And they just, they won't say that they did it. <laughs> and, then, and that pisses people off. Right, right. And it's like, why won't you just say what you did? Like, I don't know what you're talking They're about. They're like, like, all these minorities need to take responsibility. Well, okay, we will when you do. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so now we're in this Mexican standoff yeah. and we're just hurting each other. <laughs> and so that's why I say uh, I encourage all black people who feel any type of way about white people is just release them from your mind. Mm. Just release them from them from your mind. I tell people this about Trump. I'm release like, release him from release him. Absolutely, my right? gosh, <laughs> absolutely. He runs it like I'm like. How much is he charging to rent everyone's brain man. in America? Man, but that's very hard because, and and no one really wants to say this. We're just in in desperate seek of validation. Mm. So any pro black person is not really pro black. He's actually the most pro white person in the world because he can't be validated without the white approval. And nobody wants to tell those people that. Uh, well, you just. <laughs> but I mean, on a, on a, like, there's there's no platform for that, right? Because it's like I wake up and everything that matters to me, there are no white people in the way. And if there are in the way, I don't even see them, right? And there's so many other white people that are helping me that I don't even know if it has to do with race. It's just there's some people in the way and there's some people not in the way. Right. And some of those people in the way are actually black. So it gets to the point where like I don't know what's going on. But I do know if you're obsessed with like, I'm going to kneel until you understand. Like, is that about the cause or is that you just want him to be like, I'm sorry? And I, and I think that at the end of the day, I got a guy who always says woke black people just want a hug from the white man. Mm -hmm. And nobody knows how to break that down to him because they're allowing white approval to govern their entire lives. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I have like such a hard time getting my mind around that. Woke. Black men want a hug from the white man. Yeah. I don't know that like people, black women seem to have a different perspective on that. Uh-huh. Because they're the wokest, I think. Absolutely. And pushing the culture forward. And I think in some ways it's very necessary. In other ways it's very like tear, tear democracy down. Uh-huh. It was built on white supremacy so kind of tear it all down Just bring it down we have an issue with all kind of white people now if if uh let's say this podcast is not in your place and now it's in my place right and let's instead of me being nice and calm and sitting down with you when you came in i was like bitch what are you doing yeah what the fuck are you doing and i said hey bitch what, what's up with them toes how long would i continue to do that before you left how long would I continue to make you feel unwanted and unwelcome before you left? Yeah. For you not leaving means you want something from me. Right. So if we are so mad, if we're so mad in the country that that we all have passports in or 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 whatever, we would do something. But I don't think there's really any true action. I just think people are like, I feel a type of way and I want my feelings validated. Uh. I don't even want an action. Because if you really are mad, like if you are truly, truly mad at the NFL, 
it's 90 percent black just take all the black people make your own league and plenty of people get behind it it's it is what it is but they don't want their own league they want that league to like them just the way that they are and if that league says don't do this then it's like now nah, you're racist and it's just stupid so it's really not about your cause it's just about being validated right and it's like well how do you have that conversation because now you have to be strong enough to be like i'm good without them but now if I was a, a director, right, let's say I'm the podcast guru and you're at my house and you really want to be a podcast star. You, and because you want to be a podcast star so much, you might let me do some shit that you wouldn't let normal people do because you're serving the podcast. You think I'm a star. So it's like once you realize that I'm nothing and you have like you built yourself up to realize that I don't need him and I don't even feel comfortable right now. I'll probably be good without him. And then you go away. Then there's no more wokeism. Mm. Like wokeism exists when it's like, I want you to validate me, bro. Right. And if that person is not at a place to validate you, then they're not strong enough to be self-validated. And you know, now we're in America. Interesting. Gosh. I'd like to take a quick break so we can talk about our sponsor. It's the new year and you want to be healthy. And there is no better way to jumpstart your health in the morning than with Ritual, the obsessively researched vitamin for women. Ritual's essentials have the nutrients most of us don't get enough of from food, all in their clean, absorbable forms. No shady additives or ingredients that can do more harm to your body than good. Two easy-to-take capsules provide nine nutrients you need to support a strong foundation for your health. I take this vitamin. I love this vitamin. It gives me so much energy, and I love the omegas, that, the omega-3s that are in it. And more importantly, this is a gift I'm giving all my sisters for Christmas and the holidays. And it's a great gift to give somebody that you love. Everybody's jump starting the new year on their health kick. And ritual is a fantastic way to do it. The women in your life will love you for it because from D3 to omega-3, rituals essential for women helps fill gaps in women's diet. Their no nausea capsule design is gentle on an empty stomach. And there's a mint tab in every bottle to keep things fresh so you don't get that fishy aftertaste common with most omega-3s, which I can't stand. And this is the reason these are my favorite. It's easy to get your refills because Ritual is delivered. Get on board with Ritual. Better health doesn't happen overnight. And right now, Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off during your first three months. Fill in the gaps in your diet with Essential for Women, a small step that helps support a healthy foundation for your body. Visit ritual.com slash walk in to start your ritual today. That's 10% off during your first three months at ritual.com slash walk in. I could talk to you forever, but it's been an hour and 10 minutes. <laughs> and so I'm going to have you back. Oh, I would love to. This is so good. I mean, I just love these. I love having... I, honest conversations with people about this stuff because it's so we're in such dodgy times where I feel like for, for me in LA I just basically don't have conversations with primarily 90% of the people because it's honest, not even you should it's just not even I feel like once you get to a certain point of accepting a, a, an ideology uh -huh. Um, I always say like Trump, you know, the idea of Trump derangement syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it goes in both directions where there's the people who th can he can do absolutely no wrong and absolutely. will do all kinds of mental gymnastics to justify yeah. whatever and go against their own principles in doing so. Yeah. And then people who see everything that he does as the, a problem is wrong. Yeah. And once you're in either one of those places, it's almost like you can't I can't I don't know how to reach reach yeah. them well there's nothing to reach you have to figure out how they got there like how how do how do we get to this place where you're no longer seeing clearly you're no longer thinking for yourself or what? you're you think you're thinking for yourself but it's like a it's a it's a it's a cult it's not even like a religion yeah so <laughs> i i get the way that i was trained and i don't want to speak for every therapist or every, or any every therapist that's over there i i found that is is we don't have to tell anybody what to do. Yeah. You just, they just have to help them find clarity. My, that's what my therapist is so good about. He's just saying, She'll never tell me what to do. Just, you just need clarity. Then you'll know what to do. Like what to do is not even an option. Yeah. Like if somebody walked in here with guns, you and I run and we don't go, should we run? Is that me? Yeah. Like we just know what to do because we can see it clearly. Our lives are being threatened. Right. And so it, when someone, when we know that someone has a thinking disorder or, or, or whatever the fuck, um, 
a distortion as we call it. If someone has a thinking distortion, it's like, well, let's just help you find clarity. Interesting. And, and then we'll realize that, yeah, I don't know if Trump's racist. He says some slick shit, bro. <laughs> he says some slick shit that I want you to say that shit to my face and, what, what, and then pull away. And so that's He's what- He's so slick about oh it. Oh my God. And so that's why I'm always saying, let's have, let's stop using the word racist. Let's find a whole new word because that's something different. It ain't, it ain't like, I don't want to see black people successful. It's not that. It's just like, uh, it's like when someone calls you color people, you're like, hey, what the fuck? Like, what'd you call me color for? <laughs> like, you know, like, like that's a weird throwback. Like yeah. when Trump's like, there's good people on both sides. Yeah. Technically what you said ain't an issue, but what you said's an issue. And so it's like, because you don't have access to that man justifying what his words to you, you just go crazy on the internet looking for people that agree with you. Yeah. But I'm like, man, Trump. What's the last thing he said? Oh, with the, uh, with the, oh, with the, with the ladies, the squad. When he's like, go, go back to your country. Go back to where you came from. <laughs> not even an issue, right? It, that statement's not an issue. But if you know American history, that's an issue, bro. Well, and <laughs> considering that they're most all of them from America, it's just it's hilarious. some slick shit. And so I'm just like, I'm to the point where I'm like, Trump's slick, bro. And y'all don't even know that this dude is low key slick because he just gave a reason for white supremacists to be like, yo, I fuck with that statement. Yeah. Or not even fuck white supremacists. You got people who might have racial issues. Yeah. You gave them a reason to be like, I fuck with you for that, but I'm not racist. Let's just break this down. And I'm like, well, that's what's fucking people up. So that's why I say you need to release yourself. That's that whole idea of dog whistling. Yeah, that it's shit like is. like you're not saying that is, it. You're that shit just is like, cute. Ooh. Yeah. And so I'm like. And it, they're like, I hear something. Something yeah. that is something that gets filtered into my brain as something else. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that me and Moses talk about that because <laughs> everyone gets mad at Trump. And I just go, just so you know, Linda B. Johnson was the most racist guy we've ever had. And he's done more for civil rights than anything. Mm. Because I always try to say, like, I don't care what Trump's doing. Just make the laws and bless my bank account. Mm -hmm. That's all that Because that's your job. Like, I don't care. That's your job is to make my life better. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Actually, my tax rate is down, so my life is technically better. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, you guys do know that Lyndon Baines Johnson is a fucking racist. Like, he's on record of calling people in the White House staff a fucking nigger. Like, mm -hmm. all the, it's what he does. But does anybody want to reverse any of that civil rights bill? So why can't we take his work and not the man, but right. we can't take Trump's work and not, it's just where it's a little different. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Crazy times we live in. There you go. Well, thank you for the work you do. Thank you for having this oh. honest. I asked, the, I asked the same questions of everybody at the end of the podcast. Okay. What is your, I mean, you already kind of address this okay. pr as pride, but maybe there's something different. What's your biggest defect of character or vice that you're working, that you have to actively work against? Oh man, you said it is, is, pride and working from a place of love and so i'm going to define working from a place of love is um working with people for who i see they can be as opposed to who they present right now because mm. my pride gets me to be like man fuck these dudes yeah like, these dudes is whack i'm not even talking to them it's a dumb open micer who's crazy or yeah. this is a cokehead you can't tell me anything but it's like I, I need to practice and work on connecting to their abilities and who they could be and building up their strengths and just ignoring whatever their defects are. You would actually love the program that my friend Chloe developed, Theory of Enchantment. She's really? brilliant in New York. And it's all about um, not viewing people as political abstractions, uh -huh. always using the, if you're criticizing, always doing it to empower people yeah. and not disempower and always come from a place of love and compassion. Yeah. Those are like her three core principles, but then it's all, it's, she's just brilliant. She's this young woman in, um, in New York city and she's 25 and just wow. like freaking so impressive. Wow. Yeah. I'll, I'll show, I'll show you her work. Um, please do. And what's your biggest asset? Oh man. I can walk into a room and uh, and when I'm spiritually centered, I can just improve whatever the hell's going on. I love that. That's a really powerful asset. Like the roast battle. Yeah. 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 Where can we find you? I can't oh, wait Jesus. to hear your new project with Moses. <sighs> Man, I got a podcast with uh, on Comedy Central called The Roast Battle. We've been on hiatus for a while, but you can listen to that. We've got some old podcasts called Verbal Violence. Mm -hmm. Uh I did. I produced Sam J's album. It's on Comedy Central. All things streaming. Please listen to that. I did Jamar Neighbors' album, America's Nigga. It's on that Pith. I love Jamar. I did. I should have Jamar on. Please do. Oh my gosh. 
I did uh, Chris Rock's album. I did his last album. Uh, you can only get it on vinyl, so please, please buy that. Chris right. Rock's? Uh-huh. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. That's so cool. That was a... Uh, I almost didn't do it because I was being so prideful. There you go. Crazy. That's how stupid I am. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and so, so I had somebody who checked me. Yeah. I was like, oh, I want to do it this way. But Rock wants to be this way. He wants to be a and little he's bit. Like, he's Chris Rock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but I wasn't thinking like that. Yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm the chef. I can't yeah. be stopped. And yeah. then my boy was like, how much did Netflix pay him to do this? They said 40 million. And you don't want to listen right now? Yeah. And so I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. So every single project that I do, like when you're asking, how, is it hard to be in Hollywood? I'm like, no, Hollywood tests me in such a way that it forces me to submit. It yeah. forces me to be like nothing matters. Yeah. It just kind of keeps me grounded almost. And then I do the work with the kids and then I'm where I need to be. Awesome. And then I have a wife that I'm very fortunate to be able to love. I've been showing great favor with this woman. And where can we find you online? Oh, shit. I'm never doing anything online. Okay. I'm at Coach T on Twitter. I'm assuming DJ Coach T on Instagram. I don't okay. know. But at Coach T on Twitter. Nice. And All right. That is. Well, I'll have I appreciate you, back. you. Thank oh, please you. I do. appreciate you. We'll get something to promote and we'll. we'll yeah, come yeah. And talk about you should it. come on the. Um, w- the We're doing a show now, too, the weekly dumpster fire where we just talk shit about the culture. I'm with that. And so, well, I we definitely want to start having guests just sit in and and shoot the show with me uh, so we're gonna we're gonna get we'll get you in for that too that'll be fun don't lose my number i appreciate i this. won't god no it's time for the weekly check-in with bridget and cousin maggie <laughs> <laughs> okay <sighs> Whoa, it's yeah. a lot of ad reads now i know how joe rogan feels <laughs> suddenly i know how joe rogan feels With three whopping ads for our podcast this week. I know. It's a whole new era. (laughs) Joe has like 35 minutes of ads at the beginning of all of us. No, it's like 10 minutes. But it's a lot. It's a long time. Paying them bills. That's where he makes the big bucks. Paying for that man cave. Get some of that internet money. Paying for that float tank. What are we talking about in this check-in? I have no idea. Well, we have what's coming up. We're taking the holidays. Some, the <laughs> holidays are coming up. We have one more podcast before the end of the year coming yep. down the pipes. And then we're off for two weeks. Two whole weeks. Yep. Maggie's going to get a vacation from the slavery <laughs> of Fetacy Inc. The slave driver <laughs> named Bridget Fetacy. <laughs> I'm the worst slave driver ever lately. I had to take a break from my tyrannical ways. Uh. And slow it down a little. Yeah, so I'm going back to Rhode Island for the holidays to see my family. Madness. And Bridget's... Sticking around. Recovering. Yep. I'm healing. I'm taking some time to heal. Taking some me time. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad I can laugh again. It's been kind of a rough month. Yeah. Yeah been a very rough month for it's you. been a rough couple of months but good months too uh-huh. but i've been joking that i feel like this whole last month of health stuff which i've been going through some people know some people don't i've had some health issues that are personal and um i was joking that i feel like i w- did like a great routine and then broke my ankle on the dismount <laughs> I'm like, and she's got it. She nailed it. And this is always my November and December, too, I, I feel like. We were going so strong, too. We were really just, like, cranking on the dumpster fires and the, we but, had a good routine. <laughs> the exactly five days before I ended up in the ER on my birthday, Maggie was, like, <laughs> called me one Monday, and she's like, I feel like you're going to die. <laughs> was because you were so exhausted (laughs) you're like why am i so tired i feel like i'm just gonna die of exhaustion turns out it was some i was was gonna die i was like maybe you have mono maybe there's like a legitimate medical reason for what's wrong with you and there was yeah (laughs) (laughs) but everything seems to be on the upward trajectory again hopefully knock on wood but yeah (laughs) our gut intuition was correct but it's okay i needed i needed to i it it was i just have always said that i don't know why i think that these things i say to other people don't apply to me (laughs) where it's like if you don't slow down life is gonna do it for you Uh it's true 
but we still managed to accomplish a lot this year. But not back. as much. But still, we should do an inventory. Yeah, I still haven't done my freaking book proposal. Well, I did, but then I just changed what book I was yeah, writing. Yeah, exactly. You did write a book proposal. You even wrote like two. You just haven't written the final one. It's not good enough, damn it! <laughs> it's never good enough! Still, we have accomplished a lot this year. You are terrible at acknowledging your accomplishments. Well, a lot of it too is like infrastructure, which yeah. is so boring and, and necessary. Even just doing all the budget stuff in the last week, it's been... Yeah, that felt good. It, felt, it feels really good. It's a pain in the ass to get through, but it feels so good when it's done. I really do love our accountant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a shady shady he ass. just so cracks me up <laughs> I, I just love that he got into accounting to figure out how rich people hid their money <laughs> <laughs> where the rich loopholes rich people yeah used what they were. were using i'm like that's the kind of account that you really brilliant need. <laughs> yes in your life uh-huh everyone needs a little bit of sketchiness in that department so we've got one more weekend while I'm still in town, which we'll try and get finalized some final work stuff. And then we should do an inventory for our next check in, not this one. Yeah. And we're, uh, we're going. I want to hear from our listeners. What have, what are they proud of themselves for this year? Yes. And we're going out for a celebrate team. Fetacy is going out for a celebratory dinner tomorrow night. Yes. Which we had to downgrade. <laughs> it was going to be at an Uber fancy. <laughs> place but and then we did the book and we did the money and we were like oh well although we let's do be need- realistic about this <laughs> although i was thinking about it i'm like actually <laughs> we do need that's true that's true to <laughs> spend some money we might need to go to giorgio's after all <laughs> <laughs> yes we're going on a team a team building exercise <laughs> Of eating together. (laughs) Well, that's what I had last night with my day job. We had to call our holiday party a team building exercise because certain team members are don't celebrate the holidays. So it was a great time. We had a great time. Good. It's our team building experience. So tomorrow we'll have another one for a different team. I'm on so many teams. You are on a lot of teams, Maggie, because you're a team player. (laughs) I really am. I'm not. (laughs) No, you're not. (laughs) I've always hated teams. You're always like, how can I circumvent this so that I don't have to play on a team? That was like the (laughs) other day when uh, we were talking about all the weird things that young people demand these days. Oh, can't get down. (laughs) She's stuck (laughs) on the couch because the yoga ball's in her way. (laughs) And I was like, God, this is why I don't want Fetacy to ever have any employees. (laughs) I don't want to have to cave to their demands. You're like, I'm going to despise all of Fetacy's <laughs> employees. If they're going to be all crazy That's and demanding, like, which it sounds like all the kids these days are, they're like, you must have, you must not mention these words. They're coming in with lists of words you can't use. <sighs> and I'm going to have to use their pronouns and then I'm just going to quit my own company. <laughs> Ooh, we can let our we can let our listeners in on the upcoming segment that will be on YouTube in 2020. Fetacy Inc. Water Cooler oh. Edition. <laughs> yes, that's right. I'm not sure that's just a working title. Because Bridget got a water cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we need a water cooler at the office to be a proper office. And so it exists now. It was delivered today, yep, yesterday. This morning. Uh, yeah. And I walked in and there was the water cooler. It's pretty and she awesome. she laughed. We're going to do. It's a sleek model. It's a I nice know. fancy one. None of this lifting anymore. No. It's bottom loaded. Nice. Which is going to kind of suck in the apocalypse, but I'll work it out. It's going to kind of suck in the apocalypse? Well, because you need electricity. Oh. It's not like the old but school But you still ones. have bottles of water sitting around that no, you can just No, I know. Pull That's out. part of the reason that I wanted to get the water service. Mm-hmm. Because I have very high levels of water anxiety that only my close friends and family know about. <laughs> Apparently, I have a disorder as well. Oh, Jesus. You have like 18 disorders. Excuse me. This one is in the DSM, and it's called misophonia. Oh, I thought you were saying that I was including that one. I thought there was another one for a a lack of water phobia. (laughs) The lack of water phobia must be something, too. 
I feel like we've already talked about the misophonia. Is that not true? We probably did. I'm still reeling from finding out I had it. That Okay, tell oh. everyone what it is. Well, I thought of another thing that affects my misophonia. What? The list is getting longer. What? I'm going to be a crazy agoraphobe by the time I'm like 50. <laughs> if you keep getting diagnosed <laughs> with disorders, yes. Um, no, misophonia I've had for a long time. I don't know if we've talked about it. I don't listen to our podcast. <laughs> it's a it's a disorder where y- certain sounds. Oh, I think we did, and I have a, a very extreme version of it. Certain sounds drive you crazy, basically. Uh-huh. Chewing drives you crazy. Chewing is one, but also music coming from a phone that's not through speakers. Mm. Not Tur- amped. Yeah, put it, just drill a fucking hole through my brain. No, there are certain sounds where Bridget is deaf in one ear. It's and getting like worse. Completely, almost completely deaf in one ear. And there are certain sounds that I'm like, how are you even hearing that? It's driving you bananas. I also think maybe there's a connection now. Is it, is it misophonia? Is that the name of it? I, th- I don't even know if that's the right term. I can't even remember right now. But I also was wondering if you did a study of people who create jingles, if they have misophonia. But I bet they do because jingles are really just earworms and things that drive you crazy slowly over time. <laughs> interesting. All right. That would be interesting in that study. Let's, Fetacy's first study is to, fu- research study is to fund People who write jingles this, for a living, do, do they, they have, have misophonia? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the uh, percentage of them that have misophonia? I bet they do. I bet sound drive them nuts. I like that theory. All right. Maggie's got to go finish tying this loose end finish up. Finish editing this baby. <laughs> getting it ready <laughs> I to sounded go. like you're going to murder me. <laughs> Did you see the Irishman? See, no. this is what we can talk about at the water cooler. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah, well, this is what we will. And talk Baby about. Yoda. Uh huh. Little c- pop culture thing. I don't have Disney Plus or whatever it's called. Oh, so you haven't seen The Mandalorian? No. I would, I would watch that in a second. You know me. I love sci fi. I would too. And I would forget ex- all about, all about it. it. Bridget, for years, years and years and years and years, had no idea what the Star Wars movies were about. I still don't. And I've seen them hundreds of times. She doesn't remember plots very well. No, it's also a disorder. (laughs) See, here we go. Fear of no water. I'm sure that's a disorder. I'm sure you can find a name for that. (laughs) There's got to be one. Uh, I I bring it to the point that I won't even get on an elevator in LA unless I have water. mm -hmm. And that's why I carry a water bottle around with me all the time. Usually just because it's... I'm thirsty but no yeah, me it's always good to have water driven. and <laughs> no but fear of not having water what was the other one? Oh, can't remember plots can't remember storylines or nope. plots they just drip through my brain like in a colander <laughs> yep and misophonia misophonia is one that really has been affecting me for a long time <laughs> <laughs> i wonder how many things it feels like though that south park the the addiction south park was like stan i have a disease now that you know it's like a disorder it's like you're affecting my dis- misophonia <laughs> you're, you're triggering my misophonia you know what's funny is that i always share in meetings about how the birds drove me crazy and this is a really common theme because no one wants to hear the birds when they've been up all night doing blow and I particularly think that the feral parrots affect my misophonia. Oh yeah, they do. Every time they squawk, you're like, "God damn parrots!" <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. C- certain sounds. Certain sounds, like someone eating rice cakes <laughs> or Italian ice Ugh. or cereal. I will literally be sitting next to you and feel you start to be like. Gah! It makes me want to do the ASMR. Maybe that's how I'll cure my misophonia. Or make it worse. No, you have to do just the, what is it? Oh, the yeah. Sensory <laughs> overload. Kind yeah. of like washing yourself. You guys are going to have senses. to eat cereal into the mic and make me listen to it for 12 <laughs> hours. 
And if that doesn't drive her crazy, maybe her misophonia will be cured. And then I'll just have a slight twitch. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to thank our sponsors this week, Quip, Manscaped, and Ritual. Quip is an electric toothbrush, refillable floss, and toothpaste service. Go to getquip.com slash Bridget to save on gift sets and get your first refill free with a refill plan. Support for Walk-In's Welcome comes from Manscaped, who is number one in men's below-the-belt grooming. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code WALKIN at manscaped.com. Ritual is the obsessively researched vitamin for women. Better health doesn't happen overnight, and right now Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash walkin to start your ritual today. Tune in next week for another riveting episode that will change your life, help you get out of your own way, and solve all the world's problems. I want to thank Ricochet, our composer Jared Elias, my co-producer and cousin Maggie, and all of you out there listening. This has been Walk-In's Welcome with Bridget Phetasy. I'm Bridget Phetasy, and you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's the dumbest line. <laughs>